So let's talk about mold. I have a few slides and then we have a survey at the very end. And these two pictures of people that might live in these buildings are lucky because they can actually see the mold. A lot of times you can't see it in my moldy office I was in for 13 years. It was behind the paint. And then I had a patient who was in his 80s and his whole career he rehabilitated old homes. And he said that most homes have mold in them and primarily behind the sinks or underneath the sinks, the cabinets, the bathroom, the kitchen, where the sink is behind the dishwasher or behind the washer and dryer. And you have to break up the cabinetry around the sinks and pull it away from the wall. And then he said 80% of the time there was mold. It could have been gray, green, or black. So you can have a beautiful looking house, but then your house itself can be moldy in places that you don't know of. First, I'm gonna go over some symptoms that you can experience and also talk about how you can find mold in your house. The initial symptoms are right here in the face. Allergies, asthma, itchy eyes, sinusitis, wheezing. So asthma, wheezing, that's actually in the lungs. Air hunger, where you're, you're yawning a lot. So the mold is now in your lungs from breathing it in. Fatigue and weakness, now it's affecting the heart, the circulatory system. Unpredictable food allergies because it's affecting the digestive system. Headaches and memory problems, Alzheimer's because now it's affecting your brain. Muscle aches or cramping, joint pain, and inflammation in your musculoskeletal system. Abdominal issues, that's just bloating. Urinary issues, urgency, can't hold urine, or let's say you're done urinating and then five minutes later you have to do it again. Trouble regulating body temperature, your body temperature can go down like two points too low. Psoriasis on the skin, rashes, and decreased blood circulation. I had a lot of these symptoms when I had mold. These are symptoms of mold in a water damaged building. You have to get rid of this 100%. The first rule of treating your mold is number one, get out of the location where the mold is or get the mold out of you. So a musty, earthy smell in the air of the house or the building, work, office, warehouse, staining on the ceiling tiles, brown or gold, circles where water uh, landed on the ceiling tile from the ceiling, bubbling paint or peeling wallpaper, the office I had didn't have any of that except for one little spot where the uh, paint had peeled and then there were circles around the windows, water stains, circles, soft walls where the drywall is uh, softening from the moisture, history of leaks or flooding. Um, I have many stories of flooding uh, in the office and then my previous house. Humidity, you got to keep that humidity down like 45% or less. And that might include buying dehumidifiers. In my current office, I have three dehumidifiers. White soil and potted plants. That white is mold or mildew growing with your plants. Broken gutters. If your gutters are not collecting rain, the rain just kind of whips around and can hit the walls and maybe absorb in where the roof meets the walls. So make sure that the gutters are, are fixed. Puddles touching the walls. You can't have standing water up against your building, even if it's brick. Air filter gets dirty too fast. So a lot of stand up, uh, standalone air filters need to get changed every three months. And if you have a big furnace with big filters, that could be every six months, for example. But if you have to change the filters too often, consider that that extra dust is actually toxicity from mold. I've had a lot of patients with moldy houses and that was one of the symptoms of the house where they had to change your air filter too much. The floor could be discolored by the toilet or by pipes. The pipes could be uh, covered with water, condensation, uh, wet pipes, and then condensation in the windows, especially on the interior of the, of the house. Here's a few important points about mold. Number one, it goes under the category of unlucky exposures. The other category of why you're chronically ill is from bad lifestyle choices. So it's that, poor lifestyle choices, unlucky exposures. Now the exposure to mold just can be overwhelming. Medicine is horrible at diagnosing black mold and they have no treatment basically in conventional medicine. And the best way to get rid of the mold out of your body is with supplements. Drugs are not the solution. Binders coming from supplements, that's how you get rid of mold. Second point, mold also comes from eating leftover food. The number one source of mold according to the feds, meaning the government, is food. I don't believe that. I think it's from water damaged buildings. 70% of the buildings in the United States and in the UK have enough mold in them to negatively affect the inhabitants. The third point, different molds in land in different places in the body. 
So Aspergillus niger, Stachybotrys, that'll land in your heart and give you a heart attack and kill you. Um, other molds, they just end up in the sinuses and the nose and in the throat. And it also depends on your immune system and how well your body can handle the mold. The solution for mold is encompassed in all of these steps right here, seven steps. The first uh, step is diet. Now, when you have mold, you can get unpredictable food allergies. You can get bloating from a food on a, on a Wednesday, but on Tuesday, the day before, you didn't get bloating from it. So every day you just look at the food that you might eat and just you have to figure out, is this gonna harm me or not? So you don't wanna eat sugar and you don't wanna get into ketosis. That's a general rule of thumb because ketones can feed mold just like sugar can feed mold for some people, not everybody. But the, the basis of getting rid of mold is in the supplements. So drainage is super important. And then steps four and five is getting rid of parasites because parasites harbor mold. Step six is powerful detoxification. That's where you get the mycotoxins out. It's the mycotoxins that kill your body. It's not the mold. Mold makes spores and the spores harbor mycotoxins. You breathe it in, you eat it in, or it's absorbed into your skin. And then the mycotoxin kills your cells and the spores grow on dead tissue. So get rid of the mycotoxins. And for most of my career, I had people take oregano, and other candida or mold killers, but that's not the point. That's not necessarily what you want to do. You got to get the mycotoxins out. And there's one product I'm going to tell you right now, it's called Biotoxin Binder. I took two pills a day for three and a half years, and I kept using a urine test to measure mycotoxins in my urine, and it kept coming down. And then uh, it was pretty much done after three and a half years. I have been through these seven steps and I needed every single one of them and I'm pretty healthy. It's my career to be healthy. So even though I had really good lifestyle choices and dietary choices and exercise, my problem was unlucky exposures. So if you travel in a plane a lot, that's unlucky exposures. If you have a moldy house, if you've ever swam in a lake and you got parasites, if, you're, if you've are you been around sick people and you picked up viruses or you have a dog or a cat, now you have parvovirus, or Taxoplasma gondii, or you've been outside and you got bit by a mosquito. All of these are unlucky exposures. The mosquito can carry Lyme disease. Not always ticks do it, but any kind of biting in insect can carry Lyme and all the Lyme co-infections. So that was where I was at, unlucky exposures. And I my diet was good all, all these years, you know, three decades of a really good diet. But my energy was surprisingly low. Um, drainage organs, not happy, liver, gallbladder, uh, colon, lymphatic system. And then I had 50 parasites come out of my body into the toilet, step four. I had three parasites come out of my nose, step five. I did a lot of detoxification. As a matter of fact, I'm still doing that right now and getting tremendous benefit from it. Not everybody needs step seven, but that is Lyme disease to get that out. We have this quiz right here. This is the mold toxicity quiz. You can take this, I'll put the link in the first comment, I'll pin that comment. I'll also put it under the uh, video description box below. This will take you to the website, answer these 10 questions, and see if you might have mold toxicity.